Welcome to the Creative Brew, helping you keep your creative juices brewing. We're giving out chunks of insight, motivation, and practicality for your creative journey. This is Quintel Langford with the Creative Brew, helping you to get your creative juices brewing. We're here at Panels Comic Book and Coffee Bar here in Oceanside, California, on Mission Avenue. Please stop by. Today, uh, we have someone that I've, I'm, per, I'm a personal fan of and, and someone that I knew I had to get on uh, get on here for an interview and, and hear his creative journey and his process. And um, I'll let you introduce, you know, he'll introduce uh, himself uh, more uh, in detail. Thank you very much. Good All to right. meet you. You too. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> uh, my name is Sky Walker and I am an artist and muralist and uh, used to do a lot of comic books growing up, so I'm stoked to be here in panels. This is really cool. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me here. Cool, cool. Sounds great. Well, uh, first thing is um, really your creative journey. You know, how did really how did you get started? Um, I'll let you answer that. Yeah. Um, well, I've been drawing cartoons ever since I was a kid. Uh, when I was really young, I really liked Garfield. Yeah. And uh, I drew Garfield all the time. And then when I was eight years old, I sent him a bunch of my drawings, and I got a letter back from Jim Davis. Wow. And it said, "Sky, keep up the good work." on his letterhead, and it was really cool because it had die-cut teeth out of it like Garfield bit it. Wow. And I was like eight, so I said, I told my mom at breakfast, I said, hey, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, I want to be an artist. Yeah. Because before that I thought, maybe a veterinarian, even though I drew all the time. So yeah. from that I just made the decision, and then even in college when I was taking a lot of back core classes, mm -hmm. I'm like, why am I taking six math classes? I'm going to be an artist, I have an art scholarship. Yeah. They're like, well, it's in case you change your mind. I wasn't changing my mind. My brain doesn't work like that. Oh, no, no, no. I, I completely agree with that. I, I think it was one of those where, uh, I, I know personally for me, I, um, I was always been in, in the comic books and things of that nature. And uh, yeah, I started drawing early. And uh, yeah, I, I, I knew at that, you know, at a certain point when I was younger, hey, I, I, I wanted to be a comic book artist. That's, a, that's what I wanted to be. I, you know, grew up on comic books. And, you know, I ended up sort of transitioning um, more towards uh, more commercial art and the graphic design and, and branding and things of that. So uh, that's uh, something that I do now. But I, I've always have an affinity. And that, and even comic books now, even, you know, still influences my work and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think with, especially with creatives, you know, they, they get dead set uh, on, you know, they have that plan A. You know, this is especially something they're passionate about. This is what I want to do. And. You know, sometimes they, they stay with that plan A and, uh, you know, leave the plan B out and uh, <laughs> throw it out the window. Well, no, so. no one wants to be a starving artist, yeah. but at some point in your career, even if you get to be famous, you're going to be a starving artist. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to you have to go through the bumps and the grinds to get there. Yep. I mean, unless you're, you know, someone famous's son and you're inheriting a bunch of talent, yep. even then, you still gotta, you gotta, you gotta fight for it. Yep. But my, my parents were both creative, my sister's creative, my dad was an artist and designer and muralist, oh, wow. so I learned a lot from him growing up, yeah. and um, I think I inherited all those creative juices from my parents, yeah. and um, yeah, which brings me to being an artist today. Oh wow, wow, good deal, good deal. Now I see, uh, no, if, if anyone doesn't, doesn't know about Scott Walker, which is probably one of the coolest names ever, um, check him out on Instagram, uh, he's got some some great work. He's he, he's he's usually showing uh, you know some process uh, different processes of, of his work and different projects that's going on. Um, and from what I've seen, uh, and even from your sketchbooks, there there tends to be a um, there's been a certain certain theme. Uh, and maybe it's just me, but it's been like almost like a, a spacey type quality um, to it, sort of a conceptual. Uh, I didn't know if there's different things in your, um, maybe in your past or certain things, or certain influences that sort of, you know, direct what, you know, the work that you're doing now. I don't know if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, I mean, my work, um, I do a, a lot with environmental elements because I'm really inspired by nature, surfing, the ocean, the mountains. Uh, that's always been a main source of inspiration. Yeah. So Mother Nature is a big um focus in my work. So you'll see a lot of females in my work, but that is really to represent mother nature yeah. and also, you know, mothers in society because that's, you know, they're the givers of life and life yeah. is, you know, is just flowing through everything yeah. everywhere. But um, yeah, I've, I've started to try and get a little more, um, I guess, spacey with yeah. some of the stuff, just trying to branch out and elaborate more into like universal aspects, yeah. tapping into universe, planets, stars, because there's the macrocosm and there's the microcosm. Yeah. 
and we're very small in the middle of it all, even though we feel very big. Yeah. And we feel like we're number one. <laughs> yeah, that's so, it. Um, but you know, I'm trying to elaborate on that more and be able to do work that more into more murals, especially. Okay. Um, I'd like to do more of a body of work. Yeah. To really harness that story, but <laughs> I I definitely have my feet in a lot of different things, and that's I've always been that way. Yeah. And um, which is good. It helps me to grow. But yeah, I'm trying to kind of branch that story out of the whole and really just being. I I think with with every cradle, uh, you know, there are unique expressions of uh, you know one larger ideal, and uh, I, I I think that's that's something that you know everybody has their different ways of. Um, portraying, uh, almost reflecting back, uh, you know, the, the, the universe or, you know, just society and, and you know, how we view different things. Uh, I, I think that's something, especially when I see your work, that's something that, that definitely, uh, you know, resonate, resonates with me, uh, you know, uh, emotionally. And, and I'm always, like I said, I'm always inspired by your, you know, by your sketchbooks because I'm, 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 I'm more of a fan of uh, not really the, the end product that I see on the murals. I'm more... I, I love the, the sketches, I love the ideas, the process behind, the, all the framework behind that, that led up to that. That's what I, I, that's what I love. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, always a great fan of what you're doing. Well, thank you. Um, what's, uh, another question is, uh, what's, what's been, you know, some of the successes, some of your successes, and then what's, what's been, you know, some, some pitfalls, if you want to elaborate, uh, as far as your creative journey. I know I've, I've had some, <laughs> so it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I love hearing the stories as well about artists, designers, yeah. and their journey to get where they are because um, everybody's got the story, yeah. and uh, especially if they stick with it. Um, I graduated from Oregon State University. I had a four-year art scholarship that I got at a pre-college visual arts program called Jumpstart. Nice. And that was an amazing experience because I was hungry for art. My high school had dropped the art program and, and they gave the money to the football program. Yeah. So I was like, what, what good am I here? You know, this is, so um, anyway, I ended up getting a scholarship, which I was very grateful for. And then I got a BFA in graphic design. After college in 2001, I moved back to Southern California yeah. to Encinitas. Mm -hmm. And I made the decision that I wanted to work in the surf industry. Okay. So started doing uh, graphic t-shirts for uh, Rip Curl okay. in Carlsbad when they were here. Then transitioned to a couple other com uh, companies after I left there. and. Through working at those companies, learning about all the ins and outs of Illustrator, creating graphics for T-shirts, very in a very fast-paced environment, yeah. I learned a lot about my skills, and then the pros and cons of what that meant, yeah. you know. And then um, transitioning out of that, I became art director for a clothing company in um, San Marcos. And when I left there in 2009, I was like unsure what I was going to do yeah. because. Um, the economy went down and yeah. people were getting let go and I got laid off but then Whole Foods called me <laughs> and I they asked me if I wanted to do murals for the Whole Foods in Encinitas oh, wow. and I hadn't done a mural in probably 10 years yeah. and I hadn't thought about it but I knew I could do it yeah. so I just said yeah sure and then they hired me and then I ended up doing like seven different stores for them mm -hmm. and then that led into doing more um, murals for other companies and people but through that process of working really hard in an industry that I thought I wanted to work for mm -hmm. to be let go yeah. and unsure of what was going to happen but knowing I could freelance yeah. and then having that skill of doing murals from like college and high school come back yeah. that regenerated my interest in murals and my love for them and now that is my full focus so yeah. definitely had a lot of pitfalls along the way <laughs> but to get where I am right now that's just a quick kind of condensed version yeah um, I think a lot of the pitfalls along the way being where I am now is just dealing with clients and how to make it work and how to get paid but also to you know Thank you. get things done in a timely manner yeah um, not get in trouble not get not park in the wrong place not get a scissor <laughs> left to fall over get the right permits um get deposits i mean there's so many uh, yeah. little ins and outs of it all yeah that people when they see a mural they go well that's cool but sometimes the process to get to that point aside from just the creative yeah is absolutely insane yeah um but it all adds up to a cool story in the end oh yeah usually yeah so i know that's a little bit broad but i mean there's um the journey from 
college to now mm -hmm. has been amazing and vast and educational. Yeah. But um, I know I still have so much to learn. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the, the same same for me. I, like I said, I've been doing this for almost maybe about ten years now, a little past ten years, and I, I'm still learning something new every day. Uh, you know, obviously, yeah, the, the the business aspect of it is very important, especially you know going freelance, uh, very important. And I, I think that's something personally that um, I would want more cradles to, to do before they you know got out of college is try to you know getting some kind of business acumen or, or you know entrepreneurship or you know something to where um, they're starting to uh, learn that part uh, of the business because uh, yeah it could be uh, very hard to uh, uh, you know especially coming out and you know you have no idea and get you know, say getting paid getting deposits and um, you know tax you know things and and so it's a, it's the whole gamut of, of the stuff that um, you know I, I I wish I would you know I would love to be able to tell you know younger cradles coming up. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go to even if you know, say someone's starting out and be like, you know, they see your work and be like, okay, I want to do this. Um, what would you tell like a younger generation? You know, if they said, hey, I want to be a mural artist. Uh, I want to be like Skywalker. You know, what what would you tell them now? Well, I think, and you touched on a good point about business. Um, getting a good sense of business is important if yeah. you're going to go into mural work because. You can be the guy that shows up and paints mural just for food or for paints, and if it's for the right um, programs or if it's donated time or community things, that's yeah. great. But yeah. if you're gonna make a living at it, um, you have to be business savvy. Yeah. You have to make sure you get your deposits. You have to make sure that you communicate to the best of your ability all of the things that happen to get the mural done so you don't get, you know, two months deep on it and realize they're not going to pay you what you asked for yeah. or they're not going to get the scissor lift or things aren't going to happen on time. <laughs> yeah. But also another thing, when you do commercial murals, you have to bend to the will of your client sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing your own work, one of the important things is to always stay true to what you see as the best vision. Yeah. Uh, and don't, I've had so many people tell me, well, this is what you should paint as a mural. You should do this and you should do whatever. And those, not that they're bad ideas, yeah. but if they don't resonate with you, don't do it. Yeah. Because in the end, you'll be like, I didn't want that. Yep. You know, I've had people come say, we want you to paint this, but we want you to copy this person. I'm like, I'm not gonna, oh. no, that's plagiarism. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So you gotta be true to your vision and what you want to do. And uh, yeah, stay business savvy, yeah. you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, and just communicate to your best ability and also get um, agreements. Yeah. You know, so you, you save yourself, you save your client, and if they aren't going to pay for your time, and it's and they just want free stuff, then just walk away. Yeah. There, there'll be times where you have to go. You know what? This is too complicated. I have to move away from this yeah. to save my sanity. Yeah. And yeah. I've definitely done jobs where I didn't do that and regretted it. Yeah. But at times I was like, I need to make the money, so I'm just going to you know bite my tongue, oh, bite my lip, and do it. But. Yeah. Um, I hope that answers that question. Oh yeah. But yeah, staying true to yourself, <coughs> making sure you get your business things set up, yeah. and uh, you know, just be forthright with your um, decisions, and um, stay keep that open line of communication with you and the client. Cool, cool. Uh, well, I, I think for uh, I think for others, um, you know, I know I, I I pass by one of your murals uh, all the time. It's over there on the Star Theater, uh, which I I think is is one of my favorites. Uh, I you know I just look at it um, but um, what what's what's your process as far as your, your creative process as far as from beginning to end you know if you you create that mural um, do you start by I would assume do you start by a sketchbook or do you start just getting a, a concept or idea as far as what you want on the wall and then how, how do you go from that start point to the, to the beginning so yeah usually I try and take everything from a sketch I'll you know look at the wall or a, a, a photograph or see it in person. In person is better because then you can address any issues like paint flaking off, the, whether, the, whether the ground's stable or an uneven, uh, the location, um, is it safe? Um, yeah. There's so many factors that go into it. Are there electrical lines up, up there so you don't get electrocuted on the scissor lift? <laughs> so there's so many things aside from a sketch that you got to take into account. And then, but I usually do the wrong thing and I go, oh, I can paint this there. <laughs> so usually I start with a sketch and then uh, draw that up, color it up, mock it up in Photoshop, yeah. in kind of like a three pseudo 3D format so when people look at it, 
they're not looking at your flat sketch because that might look cool to them, but yeah. when they see it Photoshop, they're like, oh, yeah, I can totally see this on the wall. Yeah. So once you get to that point, you get everybody on board with what it's going to be, mm -hmm. whether there's tweaks and stuff, then you just go from there to start making things happen. Okay. Uh, the one at the Star Theater was amazing. Everybody was awesome to work with. Yeah. Um, the Star Theater themselves and the uh, Oceanside Main Street Association. Mm -hmm. I was chosen out of 40 artists to do that mural. Oh, wow. And it was... Um, it was by vote from the community, so I'm super honored yeah. that that came down. But we definitely had some things happen, like we had to repaint the wall, um, we had to delay some stuff, we had to get some permits for the sidewalk, so there was all kinds of little things that happened. Yeah. But um, in the end, it all came together, and it's one of my favorite murals as well. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, some I read that I, I think it's the, the, the contrast between, you know, you've got the, uh, you know, you've got the, the obviously the, the, the woman, uh, female thing going, but you've got the you know the flowing flowing water, the the, the sort of the spacey uh, background, and then you almost got that it sort of bleeds into that. Uh, well, it's actually a great contrast against that stark white, and somehow really, it just works. Uh, you know, it's one of those where I, I don't know if you ever get in the habit of, and maybe it's I don't know if it's other artists. You know, maybe feeling like um, when do you when do you know like when enough is enough, like on a on a wall like you're creating artwork i mean do you have the inclination to say well let's let's add this element or let's add this do you feel like what's your stopping point as far as like what's when enough is enough for a for a project before i call it finished yeah well um that you can have some overkill but also sometimes it's just time allotment yeah budget allotment and just also your mental <laughs> capacity to be like you know what I think I've done enough on this. Yeah. You, you just kind of know. That one was took me six days, 72 hours, and that's just painting time. Like I, There was five months of prep to get that thing done. So by the end, I was mentally, I'd already painted it all like six times. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think um, as long as it's you're comparing to your sketch and you're feeling good about it, and sometimes I'll get to a point where I think it's good, and then I'll just go the extra mile. Yeah. I'll be like, you know what? I could actually do a little more here. And, Filling this, filling that, and literally the day after I finished that, I came back, the lift was gone, I was admiring <laughs> what I did, and then I was like, oh, I could do that, and I could do that. <laughs> so it, 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 as an artist, you'll never stop picking your work. Yeah. And that one was tricky, because when they sent out the call to artists, they mapped out the upper part of the wall. Yeah. However, everybody else designed to the ground. I designed to the three-quarter point. Okay. So I designed it on purpose, because I thought that's what they wanted. Yeah. In the end, it worked out well because then I could say, hey, if anybody vandalizes this, yeah. you just paint over. And that became a really good selling point on the whole thing, I think, because then now the art will never be damaged. Oh, it's yeah. too high. Yeah. But um, there's a there's a big, dis uh, dis people say, well, we don't want graffiti to happen. Well, graffiti is its own form of art. Yeah. Vandalism is something else. Yeah. So uh, graffiti is awesome. Oh, yeah. Vandalism is not. Yeah. So uh, I, th I always try and make sure to tell anybody if they're saying graffiti, I'm like, hey, that's its own form. Yeah, that would be vandalism that we don't want. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> there's so much to account for in murals, and then sometimes they're straightforward, and yeah. it's like, oh, there's the wall, that's it. But then sometimes it's like, it's so complicated, you're just like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and then I'll, all the build up, all the build up, all the painting, and then two days later, I'm like, did that just happen? And I'm looking at my photos on my phone, going, wow, I, I, it's done. I did it. Okay, on to the next. Nice. Nice. So, so how many, as, as far as uh, projects right now, how, how many projects do you, uh, are you running right now? Uh, do you go like one project at a time, or do you, do you have like two or three that's going, and are you traveling? Usually I try and have as many as possible going yeah. on. Sometimes yeah. it's like you got one or two, you got some, something coming up. But yeah. currently I, I got a Sprinter van that I'm building out with my buddy Joey Fandel, mm -hmm. and I'm going to live in it and travel around the United States to do murals across the country. Yeah. Um, and we, uh, we're, we're trying to dial it in so it's a good living mo mobile mural setup. <laughs> so the minute I bought that and made the decision to do this tour, somehow I just got so incredibly busy, not just from that, but then I started getting requests for murals and projects. Very grateful for that. So now I've got six different things and I'm trying to juggle it all. Tonight I'm going down to paint um, a school with my friend Nicholas Danger yeah. and a few other buddies. Yeah. Uh, and we're all painting a different hallway. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Um, Sunday I paint an electrical box for a company in uh, Carlsbad to just kind of dress it up. Um, there's little projects, there's big ones. At the end of the month I'm going to 
paint murals for Whole Foods in Hawaii in their new location wow. in Honolulu. Wow. Uh, so I hadn't worked with them in a while and they hit me up and I was like, well, yeah. So I have a one-way ticket to Hawaii because I don't know how long it'll take. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I'm very grateful for all these things that are happening. All of a sudden, I just got so incredibly busy. Yeah. I, it, I'm literally having a hard time balancing it all. It's a good problem to have. Oh yeah. It's very overwhelming, and uh, I'm just excited to make sure everything gets done. Yeah. And then, um, and then this year on the, the trip, I mean, I don't know any down any downtime's coming, but I'm sure there will be a point where there's some downtime. But yeah. right now, while I have youth on my side, I'll yeah. take it. Because one day I'll be like too old to hustle around and do all this, oh, and then I want to look yeah. back and say, I put in all my effort. And another thing on this tour is I'm going to be having an educational component okay. where I'm going to help collaborate with other artists and help educate communities, students, young adults on the importance of public art and murals. Wow. So I'm not the first person to do that. There's so many artists and muralists and graffiti artists before me that have done that. Oh, yeah. But I think it's a continuous thing that needs to be reminded. Yeah. Uh, what people need to be reminded about because public art has been around forever. Even cave paintings are public art. Yeah. And uh, in, a, in a roundabout way. But it's so important in our society and people don't even know it. Like, oh, yeah. Without art in the public eye, you just have buildings and walls. And you have nature. Yeah. But walking around the corner and seeing an amazing mural, it's either going to it's going to inspire you, it's going to upset you, it's going to start a conversation. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's a win-win. Yeah. Nice, nice. So when, um, and I want to sort of go into that, uh, in, into the uh, the one, uh, I guess where you're you're traveling. Uh, um, when when are you thinking about starting that again? As far as the June first is about the time I think they'll be blasting off. Okay. Um, so uh, right now the van's being built. Um, we're gonna get custom racks built by my friend Johnny Wood. Yeah. At, excuse me at Woods Off-Road in San Marcos. Okay. And then um, once that's all done and I get all my other jobs done, then um, I have a buddy that's getting married at the end of May that I have to go to his wedding and then I'll be blasting off. So nice. um, June 1st is the plan. Go up the West Coast to like Washington. Yeah. Cut across the top of America with you know, some ins and outs. <laughs> yeah. Probably into Wyoming or Montana or something and then <laughs> you know, just check some stuff out. But I want to get to the East Coast for fall. Yeah. Drop down the East Coast to the South for winter. Nice. Cut across the bottom of the United States for you know as winter starts transitioning to spring. Yeah. Get up into Colorado for spring. Then uh, Utah. Drop down to Arizona. Back into California. Nice. So it's kind of a big wow. square, but I'm sure there'll be some some <laughs> like outlying squiggle marks of where I might go. Oh well, yeah. Well, you're definitely leaving your uh, your legacy after that trip. I can definitely say that. You, uh, so did you have, so are you, I would assume, are you getting uh, sponsorships and things like that? Yeah, uh, so I have uh, I have a couple ambassador programs. Um, I'm with uh, Mizu, which is, they make uh, sustainable water bottles uh, okay. to reduce plastic. Um, and so their sponsor, uh, Guayaki Yerba Mate is a sponsor, Viore okay. um, Clothing, uh, Patagonia Cardiff, and the James Brand Knife Company. Oh, wow. And uh, James Brand's in Portland. And um, yeah, so they're all on board to some degree or another, and their, their help and um, support is going to be integral through this trip. Because I use all their products on every job, yeah. whether they're staying hydrated, using their knives, being clothed. Yeah. Um, so it just seems natural that they would be a part of this and help make it happen. And ho hopefully, through social media, people can follow through and you know see that this trip is really coming together. and who I'm collaborating with, connecting with, yeah. educating with. Um, and I'm hoping to get a serious education too. Okay. Learning about other artists, learning about indigenous cultures and, you know, and other cultures outside of California. And even though I travel for work now, I want to get to places where I wouldn't normally go for jobs per, per se. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I know uh, as far as your, your background with, uh, as far as clothing, are you, I, and I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever even considered this, or I, I'm, I, which I'm sure you have, uh, have you, do you have um, 
apparel with your murals or anything yet? Or is I that something you considered? I did uh, a clothing line a few years ago with my buddy Mark Connolly. We did a little a line called Glide. It was yeah. like a surf inspired art thing. and It's kind of a fun project, but we just we shelved it after yeah. a little bit. But um, I, every once in a while I do uh, apparel graphics for different uh, projects. Okay. And I may do some for the Kickstarter that I'm going to do for the trip. Nice. Because I will do a Kickstarter. Keep your eyes open for that. Because um, uh, all the money that I get from that, and from the sponsors, by the way, goes to pay for paints and supplies to do murals for people in communities that can't afford it. Wow. So none of that money goes to me. It goes to these, to create art in places where it otherwise wouldn't be. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and um, tying it back to, oh, yeah, so then, yeah, I do t-shirts from time to time. I never put any murals on t-shirts because they're kind of a, I feel like they're a very hard thing to translate to apparel. Yeah. Because a big photograph of something works if it's vertical. Yeah. But like I have long horizontal murals and it's not going to, yeah. it's not going to translate. <laughs> Plus, I have a big thing about like producing excess stuff. Right? Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into making a t-shirt and there's a lot of like waste. There's a lot of chemicals. Yeah. Even at the most core in sustainable way, there's still something. Oh, yeah. And uh, t-shirts, great piece of art for like a week yeah. or two, and then people forget about it. Yeah. And it's like a momentary thing, but um, that's why I do them very limited. Okay. But the things I do make are like chiclet prints, yeah. because that's a piece of art you can frame, put on your wall, and hopefully enjoy for years to come. Yeah. And hopefully it will retain some value someday. Okay. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah. One can hope. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, if, if you got potential customers, clients, uh, where can where can they reach you at? Uh, oh. What's the best way to reach you? So the best way to reach me is through my website, which okay. is www.skywalkerart.com. Okay. And that's sky with an e, s k y e. Uh, then I have Instagram at skywalker underscore art. Okay. Uh, those two are the best ways. Um, you can just send me a direct message or you know email me from the website. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, if yeah. anybody has any thoughts, ideas for murals, educational, commercial, otherwise, happy to talk. Cool. Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, uh, other than that, like I said, the, um, great, great having you here. Um, you know, uh, and like I said, bring you in, in panels. Um, you know, your first time in here, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, r real quick, like, we're in the comic store. What's your favorite comic? Oh, man. Favorite comic. See, I, I, I was always a big Marvel fan. Um, still will be. Uh, I'm still attached to the old school comics. I, I, I find myself sort of going to graphic novels now because uh, I'm, I'm actually trying to work on a graphic novel myself. But um, I think, old, like, if I went old school, um, I love the old, like, Moon Knight comics from the 70s. Um, mm -hmm. You know, loved, um, you know, Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Yep. Um, always a big fan of those. Uh, always been an Avengers fan. Uh, Captain America is my favorite hero. Uh, always been a Cap fan. Um, Ca uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier was the raddest Marvel film I yeah, think. Yeah, that's that's my pick. That's my pick for number one that right movie, now. It's, it's still still number one. The Russo brothers nailed it. Like yeah. it was I remember watching him going, All right, Captain America, how are they gonna really and they stepped it they made it rad yeah. for a comic book film. Yeah. And especially with Captain America who has you know, there's a cheese factor at times, you oh, know. Because yeah. he's got the stars and stripes, but they made it epic. Oh and, yeah. Um, I actually went and saw uh, early screening of Black Panther last night. Oh, then how'd you like it? I'm, now I'm going to go watch it uh, today. How did how'd you how'd you like it? I enjoyed it. It was um, amazing uh, sets, costumes, actors, everything. Like, and it's it's kind of like they set it out of. They really don't hint at anything else in the Marvel films. Hmm. So it's all it's kind of its own, literally its own world. They really kind of s wow. separate it, so they focus on just those characters. But it was rad. I think. Uh, Chadwick Boseman did an amazing job. Everybody nice. did. Uh, and his outfits are rad. Yeah. Um, it was one of my favorite comic book characters growing up. Oh, yeah. And um, Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. Well, thank you so very much for having me on. Okay. Super rad. And any other questions? Um, I can... Yeah. I, no, I, I think that's it. Uh, like I said, please check them out. Uh, got some great work on uh, on Instagram. Please find them. Um, you can, uh, was it, was it? Isn't there under Skywalker? Skywalker or? underscore art. Okay. And Sky with an E. Yeah. So uh, please check them out. Great artist. Um, but uh, other than that, we're here at Panels. I uh, want to give a, a quick, a uh, little quick thing as far as what they're offering right now. Um, they've got some uh, comic book subscriptions available, uh, a wide variety of uh, 
comics and graphic novels. Um, I always got coffee and snacks. Um, so, uh, and they're also available if you want to uh, do a, a private event space here. Uh, they are available for something like that. Please call or contact them uh, for availability. And uh, if you tag them on Instagram, uh, you get a 10% off your, uh, your next purchase. So uh, please check them out. Uh, like I said, we want to, um, you know, help our, our local community, our local artists, local cradles. And um, so please support panels, please support Skywalker on what he's doing. We've got some great things going. And uh, once again, this has been another episode of the Cradle Brew. Stay cradle and be inspired.